last in a world championships on home soil. Nothing beats that. Kazakhstan have another boxer representing them in this next final. 54 kilogram bantamweight division. In the tournament number two seed, Dina Jolomon, is the Kazakh representative. She's facing off against Stoika Petrova, the vastly experienced Bulgarian. For gold medal glory here in the bantamweight division. Here is the Bulgarian representative, sole Bulgarian contesting world championship gold here in Astana. Stoika Petrova, 30 years of age now, reigning European championship gold medalist. Defeated Nicola Adams at down at 51 kilograms on that run to continental gold. Here she is competing in her third world, excuse me, her fourth world championships. It was her best ever performance, improving on the quarterfinal finishes she had back in 2012 and in the most recent edition in Jeju two years ago. Here's the home boxer, 23-year-old Dina Jolomon. She's also competing, well, she's competing in her third world championships here. She made it through to the quarterfinals in the last edition. Lost at the preliminary rounds in 2010. Ranked number 10 in the world, she's the tournament number two seed. Petrova is ranked number two in the world, down at 51 kilograms. So she stepped up in weight and this promises to be an intriguing encounter between boxers at opposite ends of the experience spectrum. Jolomon just 23 years of age. And here she is in front of her home fans once again. Down at light flyweight, she perhaps heard the Kazakh national anthem reverberating around the Baris Arena. For Nazim Kazaybe, how much inspiration will she take from that? And she looks to emulate the accomplishment of her compatriot as she goes for world championship gold here in the 54 kilogram bantamweight division. So the opening bell sounds, it's the gold medal contest. 54 kilogram bantamweight between boxers from Bulgaria and Kazakhstan. The boxer wearing blue is ranked number 10 in the world. And she's the tournament number two seed, that's Dina Jolomon. And her opponent, wearing red, operating out of their southpaw stance, is the vastly experienced Stoika Petrova, the reigning European Championship gold medalist, down at 51 kilograms, contesting her first World Championship final here in her fourth appearance at a World Championships. Been a big admirer of uh, Petrova's work over the years. I think she's very skillful indeed. Counter puncher, sits back, but uh, occasionally you'll see a very fast, sharp jab go out, and that's to trigger the opponent off because she prefers the opponents to come forward. And Jolomon here, Tash, she's got to quicken the feet up, hasn't she, and apply lots of pressure and try and take Petrova out of a, out of a comfort zone. We, we say it time and time again, when it, when it's a southpaw and an orthodox situation, it's, it's always going to be the battle of the feet and who can close down the space quickest. Um, that was a good, a good backhand by Petrova. That there, she, she, She's an experienced person, but, you know, um, Zolomon is, com is, is coming in. She's got the home crowd behind her. She's just heard the national anthem go, and she's going to want to win. She's going to want to put on a good show, and it's up to uh, Petrova to stop, to stop that. Petra has had a brilliant run through to this gold medal bout. Fourth bout of the tournament for both of these boxers. Petrova beat Kakiroglu from Turkey unanimously in her opening contest in the second preliminary round. Then she beat Great Britain's Lisa Whiteside on a unanimous decision. And in the semi-finals yesterday, she beat the tournament number one seed, Diana Sagateva of Russia. Liu Kao Pao, the number three seed she beat yesterday. So a good run of seed slaying performances by this boxer. And here she finds herself in the gold medal bout. Against the 
Boxer and Tournament number two seed. I thought it was a fairly close round, to be quite honest. Petra was trying to get into a rhythm and bring her opponent onto the so shots, but Jolliman had some success herself coming forward. What she's got to do is probably create a little bit more space. That was a little bit better there with the left hands, but occasionally she just gets a little bit too close. And as Tasha said, it's a battle of the feet. Who can close the gap down? Um, but Petra, when she's on the ropes, most certainly Jolliman will have opportunities to land some big shots, but let's see the scores. It was a fairly close round. And all three of the judges scoring in favour of Jolliman. Jolliman just... Jolliman just caught Pet 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 Petrova at the, the, the very last couple of seconds of the round with, with a, I think, two backhand, um, and that probably has won the round for her. If there's a, is a, a criticism of Petra, Pet sometimes she waits a bit too long. Too long, yeah. So maybe she now that now she's one point down, or one round down, sorry, that she needs to um, step a bit on a gas and, and make something happen. So the South Poor and Orthodox sometimes coming together in untidy fashion in this contest so far. Petrova falling short with their own attacks as the two boxers fuse into it. Tidy preps with a clinch once again. If you watch how Petrova boxes, she, she's very good mid and long range. And she needs opponent just to stay at bay. But when they come in close, there's literally no work from Petrova on the inside. So she's got good skills when she's at range. But I think the difference has probably been uh, Jolliman quick feet in, closing that gap down, then putting that pressure on. And obviously the, on home soil, the judges are, are liking what they're seeing from the Kazakh boxer. But uh, you're right, Tash Petrov has probably got to do something a little bit different now. She's behind, so she's got to probably force the pace a little bit more. But there you go, see, she's not used to coming forward. And uh, that's how she got caught there. Exactly right, Richie. She's just waiting and waiting, and, and when Kazakhstan comes, she's got no reply for what she does. And, and even though it might be one shot, it might not even be any because um, Zolomon's being the aggressor and, and is, is throwing the shot. She, she's got she's not winning the round. Boxers have struggled to find their range in this second round. Again, shots are either being thrown out of range or long. They're going long when they come within punching range. So the referee has spent. A lot of time separating and talking to the two boxes. Styles not meshing for an aesthetically pleasing spectacle, but it's very competitive in this battle for gold in the 54 kilogram bantamweight division. Again, that's another close round, but you, it depending on what the judge wants to see, but I, I would have to give it to Zolomon because she's the only one that's actually forcing the pace in and throwing shots and trying to make something happen. Um, Petra is trying to counter, but she, she's just waiting too long. Waiting a little bit too long, and it's allowing Jolliman then just to take the initiative and, and come forward. And it is scrappy on the inside, but the better work's definitely come, I think, from Jolliman. Let's have a look. Well, two judges to one, go for Jolliman. And again, the, the, the judges are liking what they're seeing with that aggression, no doubt. So it's tied up for Judge B. She, as that observer has given the second round to Petra, but it's a two round lead for judges A and C for the tournament number two, Steve Jolin. So, into the second half of this contest, then, and really, this is resembling a wrestling match at times more than a boxing contest. Lots of holding and mauling on the inside. We're seeing it once again, the boxers struggling to find their range. And as a result, continuing to fuse untidily into clinches. Seeing it once again. And now a point's going to be deducted. Petrova warned for excessive holding. The referee has been speaking to both boxers frequently throughout this contest, to be fair. And I suspect that Jolliman's going to have to watch her conduct as well. That really does change things around now for Petrovic. She knows that she's behind and she's just had a warning. Um, and so she's got an uphill task. This may bring Petrova more over her front foot, which she doesn't normally like to do. And that's why it's getting a little bit scrappy. She likes to box at range on the back foot. But Tash, she's going to have to come forward now and do something different, isn't she? She is now. Um, if, she doesn't, if she doesn't win this round, it's a 10-8 round with the, with the point taken off uh, for the warning. So she has to win the round. And, uh, and that just, just makes it even to, to, to nine all. So she, she's got to do something different. She's got to attack. 
So Petrova in her first World Championship final. In a really tough position here. She's conceded the opening two rounds for judges A and C. She got the share of the second round for judge B after conceding the first for that observer as well. So she tied it up on the judge B scorecard but was trailing by two but was then warned for excessive holding by the referee in this round. And really, it's difficult to say that she's actually won it. So she could be facing a 10-8 round in the, as we approach the closing seconds. Very untidy contest, this one. Nobody's, not, not one of them has thrown the jab. They're both trying to land the big backhand to try and win the round with one shot. And because of that, their arms are getting tangled because they're, they're missing, they're not, they're not in a range. That was a good backhand over. <laughs> just prove, the bell prove me wrong, just right on the button. <laughs> Petrova landed a cracking left hand, perhaps her best shot of the entire contest. So it's going to be interesting to see what the scorecards read. Plenty of animation in Jolomun's corner from her coach beyond the ropes. Well, it's scrappy, but I think Jolomun is doing the, the better work. There's the odd shot from Petrova, but there's, there's no eye-catching stuff from the Bulgarian. Um, and she's been a little bit exposed here. We, I've seen her in the pass box, lovely at range and at distance, but here she's been exposed in terms of on the inside. Jolomon's just outworked on the inside. That was right at the end of the round, but no doubt Jolomon has got the round, and 10-8 it should be. Let's have a look. And there's con confirmation. Jolomon taking the round across the board, take away that one point, makes it a 10-8 round, and she's in a really tough position now, going into the fourth and final round. <laughs> So the final round then of what has been a really messy encounter for bantamweight gold in the 54 kilogram weight class. Stoika Petrova ranked number two in the world down at 51 kilograms. He stepped up and made it all the way through to the championship final here. But neither boxer has acquitted themselves in eye-catching fashion. Good work to the body from Jolliman. But this is where the contest has been fought for the majority of it. Lots of holding, lots of mauling, lots of grappling at close range. And there's been precious little boxing hitting on the back of the head. Jolliman spoken to by the referee. You see He's going to have to watch her conduct as well. One of her major faults here, Petrova, is when she throws a left hand, a uh, lead, uh, sorry, her back leg comes round. She comes very square when she throws that backhand of hers. She tries to get so much power into the shot, as Tasha says, she's not using the jab, so she's looking to land a big left hand. But by doing that, she brings her rear leg through, and she comes square, and that's why she's getting caught on the inside. Look how square she is there, look at that. The first 20 seconds of this round, Petrova came out, and she looked like Petrova. She was throwing jabs and trying to make something happen, uh, but now it's just gone back to the way it was for the last three rounds. Well, the fans here, Absolutely delighted with what they're seeing because they will know that their boxer, Dina Jolliman, is in a really commanding position. So never mind the spectacle, think about the result. And she's on the cusp of claiming world championship gold here. It'll be the second world titleist in the three bouts we've had so far here at the Barris Arena. So really couldn't go much better for them. And that is why there is such an incredible atmosphere here as they are cheering on their boxer to her first world title. Just to echo what you said, Richie, I mean, if you, whether you, you plan to land or not with, the, with your jab, you've got to throw it just to, as a range finder, just to make your opponent think about something. And neither of them have thrown a jab and just trying to land the big backhands to win the round. And, and, and that was the result. But I think Kazakhstan will be celebrating for the second time because for me, she, she, she got that, she got that belt. Remember, it was a 10-8 round by virtue of the warning issued against Petrova in round number three for excessive holding. Very untidy affair, that one. Petrova, though, her best ever result in this her fourth appearance at the World Championships. But that boxer is all smiles. Dina Jolliman about to be crowned as world champion. <laughs> Dina Jolliman is absolutely ecstatic, having been declared as the world champion here in front of her home fans at the Barris Arena in Astana. 
She takes 54 kilogram bantamweight gold. The tournament number two seed. Not the prettiest display in the final, but what a series of performances she put together. And that is why those fans are absolutely jubilant. Because for the second final this morning, Kazakhstan have made it two out of two. Claiming world championship gold in the 54 kilogram bantamweight division and having only won one world title in the nine edition is history of the world championships coming into this tournament. They've won two in one afternoon session. Brilliant display for the home fans. And Dina Joliman absolutely delighted with what she's achieved. Horses for courses, wasn't it? It wasn't a, a classic contest, but she did what she had to do and she closed that gap down. It was scrappy at times. But I think Joliman, all credit to her, I think she out-hustled and outworked her opponent. And Petrovic, if she was to get into a rhythm and box at range, we know she's very skillful, but Joliman never allowed us to do that, did she, Tash? She got, she got stuck into it. And that was the key. She, she, she took.